Hi guys, it's Matt from Every Cloud Technologies. Today we're going to go through the control panel for an end user or domain admin. You can see here I'm logging in uh, as the actual domain admin with the domain details. These details would have already been set up for you in the control panel and have been emailed to you by uh, support. So we're going to log in, we're going to go through all of the important information that you need to know including the workspace logs and setting up some of the other features. Okay, so we've logged into the control panel now. The very first tab that we come to is the workspace tab. This is the, um, the view that you can see all of your logs, both inbound and outbound, or you can see both logs uh, together. We've got some predefined date templates here on the drop down menu. Uh, we can select one of these. In fact, I'll select uh, for January. The from, to, and subject fields are all searchable using wildcards. So if I'm looking for an email which contains the word sales, all we simply do is uh, just type that in, hit the enter button. The system will automatically filter any email that contains the word sales or part of uh, sales. We can see who the user was here. We can use the same search uh, function in the to and the subject fields, and we have a display filter here. So if I just reset that view, uh, going over to the display filter, we can see here drop down menu messages that are stopped to spam only. No delivery status for these messages because they are still held within our network. Uh, if you wanted to release a message, very simply tick the box, go to user options. We can either deliver the email or deliver and whitelist. We click deliver email, click perform action, and we will have a comfort message displayed on the screen there to say that that message has been displayed. It's now been removed from the spam list and will appear in a, a few moments in the clean messages. And it will also be obviously delivered to the end user's uh, mailbox or the recipient's mailbox. We've got some reason codes here. These are uh, some uh, very obvious. You can see uh, customer blacklist. Some others uh, might need a little bit more explanation. If you click over on the help button, uh, it downloads a complete control panel manual. In the back two pages of that are a full list of uh, some of the reason codes if you want to investigate something a bit further. We'll just uh, go back to adopted again. Adopted meaning that the emails were brought into our network. I'll talk to you about the rejected email shortly. Um, you can see he, he, uh, here emails marked as delivered. If we hover the cursor over the, uh, the actual status, we can see the SMTP message coming back from the recipient's mail server. Now, if this was showing as deferred, um, we would, we would uh, expect to see some form of temporary error, maybe a 450 insufficient system resources, uh, something like that. Uh, so you've got a visual check that you can see that you have a, an issue with your mail server. If we click over here on the preview, you'll see that uh, clean emails are not stored. Unless you have archiving or continuity service set up, then we don't store the emails and you have no ability to read the emails. But what we do have is the header information and the obviously the SMTP code coming back from the recipient's mail server. You've got this view for inbound and outbound emails if you're using us for outbound relay, um, which is really great if you need to investigate whether an email has been delivered to a recipient you can do that for outbound as well so a really powerful tool here um, uh, all of the logs available to you you can select anything up to uh, three months worth of traffic we hold data for three months all emails stopped as info mail virus content or spam will be held on our network for 90 days so you've got that 90 day comfort that if uh, something's been missed from a spam report then uh, you will be able to release it Let's have a look at some of the other options that we've got uh, as the uh, domain admin. If we click down to the actual domain, now we only charge for um, uh, physical uh, employees within a business. Okay, so we don't charge per domain or per uh, mailbox basis. We only charge a license fee for per user. So you can add as many alias domains as you want to. If you want to add an alias domain, very simple. 
um, all we need to do is click on the domains button here type in the alias domain let's do test.com.au hit the add button hit the save button comfort message at the bottom there to say that that's successfully been added and now we can see that test.com.au has been added as an alias domain there is no additional charge for that so let's have a look at some of the management functions that we have this is the filter information now this particular domain is using the um, the free pop or imap accounts for customers that are using our filter service if we were using uh, an IP address uh, we could simply if you wanted to make a change to that IP address you could simply make the changes here and also for outgoing relay you can simply add the outgoing relay here okay so that's that but as this account was a pop account we'll leave that as it was let's have a look at the spam report this is the daily digest of emails that have been stopped in fact I'm just working on two screens I'll try and pull one over just a second so this is the actual spam report this is the report or daily digest of spam mails that have been stopped for you can see directly from the body of the spam report the customer or the end user the end user has the ability to deliver or whitelist directly from the body of the uh, spam report okay so for example if we want to deliver this email the customer just clicks deliver and that email will be delivered into their mailbox so that's the spam report the timings of the spam report uh, can be defined in the control panel here uh, this is just the uh, message to say that the email has been successfully released uh, which comes from the end user or is uh, given to the, or shown to the uh, the end user that released that email is a comfort message that's displayed so uh, going back these are the t delivery times what we can do is we can allow users to define their own delivery times so for example uh, if uh, a CEO or a director doesn't want to receive four spam reports a day he can uh, he or she can set that to uh, to be delivered once a day or twice a day you have complete flexibility of the delivery and they can be uh, set up for individual users as well if you don't want to uh, allow your users to receive a spam report and you want just an a, a cumulative report sent to one uh, uh, one individual or the uh, or the admin or yourself you can simply click the uh, email address for a cumulative report submit an email address there and then one a cumulative report will be sent to the uh, on-site admin now uh, that's basically it your setup it's a very very comprehensive uh, anti-spam or anti-spam uh, uh, and antivirus uh, solution what we do have included in the price is also a content filter this is where you can define both an inbound and outbound uh, uh, policy so for example if you don't want to receive specific file types you can do that as a default now what we do is block executable files that are in attachments so if uh, uh, as, a, as a safety precaution these these are already blocked this will give you an additional layer of security if, uh, an, if an executable file contains a virus uh, and that virus is not being picked up by the global scan engines this is giving you an additional layer of security so a, a really good uh, um, a really good thing to to have activated we also have an incredibly powerful tool for the manipulation of both inbound and outbound uh, emails this is the compliance filter we can uh, basically based upon the criteria here on the left hand side the from to the IP address the host name the subject attachments uh, whether it contains a specific word in the header or in the body uh, we can use regular expressions as well to take the following actions we can reject the message completely this means that uh, the message doesn't even get to your network so if you've got a disgruntled employee sending abusive emails into the company you can simply reject their messages and no one ever has to look at them you can redirect the uh, uh, the message to a different IP address so for example if you wanted to use the compliance filter to 
route uh, a particular sales group to a different IP address or mail server, you could set up a compliance filter rule in the cloud so that those messages are actually sent uh, to a different IP address. You can reroute uh, messages based on the criteria above to a different um, uh, email address. Uh, you can tag as clean spam or virus, uh, uh, spam and virus tagging, particularly if you want to uh, do further investigation and you want those emails put into a quarantine report. Or you can add a BCC. Let's say you're a uh, uh, your managing director or, or CEO, company CEO wants to uh, be copied in on any emails that contain the word purchase order. You can set that up here, uh, and it can all be done in the cloud. So that's the compliance filter, an incredibly powerful tool. We also offer encryption services. As standard, we try to deliver emails, all, all emails uh, via TLS. If the receiving party accepts TLS, then the email will be sent via TLS. If you want to define an encryption policy, you can do that from the control panel. You can also add a, a mail footer. We will also do HTML footers as well, um, but you can do a plain text mail footer here as well. There are two other services that we have which there are an additional charge for. One of those is the continuity service. Now continuity service is it's an insurance policy in the fact that if your mail server was to crash or was unavailable, all emails will be sent to uh, either POP, IMAP accounts or webmail so that your staff can continue working. Now, the reason why I said it's an insurance policy is with the continuity service, you get access to three months' worth of historical traffic. That historical uh, e email traffic, um, that three months of historical email traffic uh, can be released from the, quarant uh, from the archive to the uh, user's uh, IMAP, POP, or webmail account during a server outage so that they can continue working. During that uh, period, uh, uh, whilst they're working, we will also save all outbound messages and send them back to the mail server once it's back up online so that you've got a full audit log and trail of all messages that were sent and received during the server outage. Uh, so continuity service, there is an additional charge for that. Speak to your account manager uh, and they will give you some pricing on that. Again, uh, same thing, archiving. We can archive traffic in the cloud. Uh, we can do that. You can access the archive traffic from the workspace. You will see that there's an email archive tab and you will see your emails or the customer's emails uh, in, in the archive. To release an email from the archive, all you simply need to do is tick the selected box and click the deliver button. So really, really easy. Uh, so archiving, really simple to set up. All you need to do is simply uh, select the button, hit, uh, uh, hit the save on archiving, let's go back here, hit the save button on the domain that you want to archive uh, and it's set up and um, we, we will be archiving in the cloud. Okay, so going back to the workspace again, I did mention to you rejected emails. You can see everything, both in and out, anything that's been sent to your domain in this control panel, including messages that we've rejected from our network. Now, these are messages that we know have come from blacklisted IP addresses. Okay, so these are known spammers, blacklisted IP addresses on our own or uh, on RBL. So, uh, if you need to, um, or if, if, for example, you were send a customer, a genuine customer who was on a blacklist, was sending you a message, you would see their email here. Now, every single rejected email that we have or, or uh, that is uh, s rejected from our network is sent an NDR. And in that NDR is a link for them to be able to uh, contact us uh, and to get themselves whitelisted on our network. So don't worry if a customer uh, or one of your customers is uh, blacklisted and they're sending you email and we're not delivering it, there is a mechanism in place for that customer to be able to deliver emails to you. Okay, so that's the workspace. Um, if you've got any questions, please email support at everycloudtech.com. Uh, you got any questions, give us a call uh, or speak directly to your account manager. My name is Matt. Thanks very much for watching and have a nice day.